we are having two types actually passive system and active system passive system means in the sense whatever the concentrated solar power that the concentrated solar power generation is called as a passive system where we are placing what is the uh, reflectors and uh, a, a law the height uh, and we are going to place the tower so where it receives the radiations and it converts that one into heat and afterwards whatever the liquid is there that it generates the steam steam thereby you are controlling the turbine that is what happening on the other side that whatever the pv systems that we are seeing at the outside solar pv panel systems so they are going to be used as active sources because directly the radiation will fall on that one then automatically energy that you will get it but the main thing is when the sun position changes automatically whatever the energy that it is going to re receive or the radiations that is going to receive will change once if it changes then automatically automatically so your system will not become an efficient manner so you are not going to produce more amount of energy so in order to control that uh, system we need automation based technology so that's why reason we have placed a workshop so green energy and automation based controlling technique so once if we take the controlling method in such a manner that when the sun rotates if it takes the gps system and if it gives the signals to the plc based system so that if my solar panel rotates according to the sun position then automatically so more amount of energy can be generated and thereby we can utilize the system very efficiently so green energy is the energy that can be extracted generated and utilized without any negative impact to the environment with the effective policies energy policies made by the central and state governments the markets and investments are increasing in this field day by day even to get a water to extract the water from the ground level we need power so at least 20 35 30 years back we were using wells so people were not depending on motors are extracting pump extracting water from the pumps but each and every city everybody is depending on power but at the same time government they are putting they are amending many laws but properly effectively not implementing those rules and regulations this is the major drawback in india i do accept it is a developing country if you go to some of the poor countries under developed countries you can't find any cable or you can't find any telephone electric tower or electric pole in that complete country the cables are laid in the underground so when india gets a prepaid electric service system like a mobile prepaid charge top up you pay how much you want then use it if that type of electricity meters are incorporated in india then there will be 50% of power saving in india in fact some countries have gone far ahead and they are drawing out road map to generate solar energy in sub in, in the sahara part of the africa transmit to europe and other parts world scale projects are being designed imagine where is sub sahara desert and where is europe today we are getting oil from the kuwait and other countries down south tomorrow you can imagine the electric power would be transmitted from one part of the globe to other part that kind of plants are being designed and they are being thought of and very often the scientists say here in india we the biggest challenge for india to uh, tap the solar energy is our technological incompetence in sense of today we do not have appropriate technology right kind of technology to handle situations like solar flare ups 
which would disturb the transmission. Perhaps that is a challenge. And this is where we all have to pool our talents together. I am so glad that the faculty here, the Triple E department, has paid, has appreciated this need and designed a workshop of this nature. And today I think when I am talking this particular point, I just came to my mind that actually people used to talk what is there in Rajasthan, it's a desert, who will go and stay in Rajasthan. But you know, see, God is great always in some time, other time, you feel in when experience happens. Today I may not believe this country is going to produce 30 to 40 percent of the solar energy from the Rajasthan, you know that, because it is desert. See what happened, one, at one point of time you felt that Rajasthan is useless. But today Rajasthan, Gujarat, Western Bank of India is going to cover 60 to 70 percent of the power generation. And 60 to 70 percent of the hydropower is coming from the north and northeast sector. And all this power totally available in the north and western part. But unfortunately most of the power requirement is in the south region. When I am talking about these figures it appears to be strange. But today we are not, we just should not stop at the okay whether we are producing power or not. But we are producing power at the same time. I think even Purushottam sir and others mentioned very clearly how effectively you are utilizing the power is utmost important. See today power generation alone, the way we are spending money for the power generation and each unit sometimes you are thinking suppose if I want to produce one megawatt power of a co using coal based equipment it is not less than 5 crores and maybe in the what you call solar and other areas it may be more also but still the lot of changes is coming up in the technology as you most of the aware that what you call photovoltaic cells are giving up the solar energy but I am telling you the reality if you want to beat the solar energy or if you bring, if you want to bring the solar energy on par with the power generation in the form of a coal you know latest technology what people are trying to develop is a concentrated solar power the quite interesting point in concentrated solar power is again they use some sort of a lenses a focused concentrated power and ultimately the power generation is again in the form of a turbine and other things like in our coal based systems because today when you talk about gigawatts you have to scale up your technology otherwise the per unit cost it will not be in your control see ultimately when you generate the power and if it is not able to buy that power definitely utilities will not be happy to use it you yourself will not be happy to use it so what I want to convey here is that power generation is becoming and technology is going to play a vital role and as already uh, BHL is working out for the concentrated solar powers along with the photovoltaic cells technology and we are trying to improve the performance or efficiency terms but even then whatever you see, there is a consortium formed by the government of India and BHL is one among them. There is about 25,000 megawatt power that is about 25 gigawatt of solar power is expected to be produced shortly at uh, Rajasthan. And see if you want to generate such a huge amount, the technology should be very good so that per unit cost will be in control range. And second thing what I want to tell you see, well we have established completely this power generation part. but our needs are not going to be what you call stopped there. You produce power and you produce a lot of power even in the glaciers of the what you call Ganga and uh, other regions, other rivers, a northeast bank. But how to bring this power? See one very important point I want to stress at this point of time is till today people are started to think only the generation either whether I am comfortable with the generation or not. But the technocrats behind this country have given an ultimate agenda to the what you call a community of the power engineering people, community of power engineering people. If you generate power alone will not be sufficient. How to bring power to the door of customer effectively? This is a very important point now one has to emphasize simultaneously. So control of electrical power is a one issue touched up by your HOD. But this control of power should be substantially improved by means of effective transmission system also. See what is important is that once you generated power unless you strengthen your existing transmission system I am telling you the fact you will be what you call held up with a tra transmission distribution losses you cannot really utilize whatever power generated in the northeastern sector or western sector in southern zone you have to what you call link your grid you have to transmit the power at very high voltages then only you can reduce your transmission distribution losses so for that purpose now there is a lot of emphasis in the even 12th plan 
along with the generation capacity to be increased up to something like 350 megawatt and we are standing around 260 i think in august 2014 but even then people are expecting to build a transmission system up to 1200 kv one i want a fundamental point maybe you have read in our power system also the power handling capability of any transmission system is in proportion to your voltage or in square of the voltage so if you increase your voltage you can carry more power in that line without losses this is one agenda what people are thinking but second thing there is even what you call a good amount of studies are going which is very definitely beneficial to power electronics engineers that is a how to incorporate fax device in the existing transmission system itself to improve the power enhancing capability so that if i put some sort of a fax device like a statcom or a what you call control shunt reactors or even there are a quite good amount of what you call phase shifting transformers all these equipment if you put in existing transmission system itself you can transmit the power with what you call a good power factor and other things but this sort of a technology is also working by people i think there is a lot of huge amount of the business is involved and bhl is already involved in such type of business and coming to the what you call other important agenda that once okay power is coming to your door how exactly you want to have a what you call a reliable power this is a one of the important issue you see today every day other day you can see that what you call there is a power failure i am telling you unless you take a proper care even you generate 600 gigawatt in indian in indian what you call in india still you will have this problem where we are lacking is a reliability of the power this reliability of the power we how to how find a ways to control this what you call power interruption how to control the power interruption how to control the outage of equipment so there is a lot of what you call now the whole grid what we are talking today is a uh, transmission or a generation grid today there is a new terminology which is coming out is called a smart grid smart grid means all the equipment which are there in the smart grid is highly efficient that means they are reliable equipment only in the grid so which in turn gives a reliable power to the customer today i am telling you it may not be what you call exaggerating the situation in some countries if i don't want to cut even 1 minute of the power your tariff is different from the if i even if i go one hour what you call without power so that is how people are managing so reliability is playing a vital role in the some of the developed countries where even one minute of the power they don't want to lose so if you club the what you call generation transmission and distribution the requirement of the generation of a power in this country i think we have enough opportunities in this country as prashantan sir already told 40 years back really you see when when i was studying my btech really i don't find what you call so many jobs in the electrical engineering but i am telling you see one important point to young engineers today the opportunities are more so many multinationals wanted to put their companies in india and so many people are maintaining their r&d in india itself what is the credibility see that is what they believe that in india there is a good amount of what you call technocrats available it's only a matter of how to train them to their needs and today you may not believe that some of the good firms they already maintaining a what you call huge investment they are spending huge investment on the r&d what you call with infrastructure available in india itself what you call krishna patna or recent whatever uh, generating stations are coming up people want 800 megawatt in a single shot it's not like a 210 megawatt or 160 megawatt 130 megawatt which was at one point of time now people started to talk about a single unit of 800 megawatt definitely you require a technology called a super critical technology that is where actually vhl is working out now 660 megawatt 800 megawatt these are all single what you call single installation capacities imagine now the situation that all these capacities unless you fulfill i am not going to reach the a power what you call establishment or generating power of capacity 600 gigawatt by the year 2025 so this is what is the now your target how to achieve it is in our hands definitely solar is going to play vital role in making this assessment today solar maybe what you call is only few gigawatt but i am sure by the end of 2017 and by the end of 2022 i am expecting it will be in the what you call either second or it will be definitely as the third after hydro and thermal it will be definitely ever solar is going to play the vital role because the way solar is growing compared to the wind energy solar will definitely catch up today wind energy is more compared to the solar but solar energy will occupy the position of the wind very shortly This is what is the total power capacity you call scenario in India. You can see that hydro is mostly in Himalayan regions, and the most important thing is transmission line has to pass through a different climatic conditions. And the thermal power stations mostly coastal belt and what you call decentralized power generation stations. 
and high capacity transmission corridors need to be developed due to concentration of power stations in locality. See, lot of emphasis is coming. No power is generating in the east, and I am going to use the power at south. And I am not very sure that how to control this power. Sometimes what you call is there is change in the angle. Your power flow is getting affected. And there is, like in, our experience shows that one or two blackouts already in India. Why this is happening is there is a lot of what you call understanding is required. Power flow gets affected with the angle at which the voltages are appearing at that particular places. If to control all these things, now people are trying to work with the new concepts like a phasor measure units. That means at each location you are going to measure not only the voltage, voltage at what angle it is there. You are measuring now the voltage waveform, not the voltage amplitude. See, if you see most of the meters today, what they say is what is the RMS value of the voltage. But that doesn't tell you that how much power flow happens from the east to the south. What is required is what is the voltage at angle, V at an angle of alpha, what is that alpha? So at each instant, what is the voltage you are measuring at the eastern zone should be known at the same instant what is the angle at south zone also. So that you know exactly how much power can happen to flow. If you know this information well in advance, then if there is any blackout possibility that you can take a corrective action well in advance and there will not be any blackouts across the Indian grid. And second thing is that there was a, people talked about much in that area why we should not centralize this grid. This is a very important issue one has to work out in this zone. Whatever power generation capacity you are installing, whether it is a what you call private companies or the government companies, try to put this power generation into the central grid. Definitely everybody can use that effectively. So this is one area I think there is a lot of emphasis is going to come out shortly because the moment you talk about the power generation is local, definitely one thinks about the how to centralize this power generation and bring out into a what you call a common platform to the everybody, it's access to the everybody. And third most important thing here one has to understand that oh, even you generate the power, what is the what, what you call what is the best utilization to a particular place? And all these things are now going to play a vital role because unless the power which you are generating is not completely utilizing to a particular area, then there is no use of generating the power. So these three areas, I think there is a lot of emphasis. And fourth one, I think those who are interested in future about a power electronics and other areas, I try to understand a real situation. I am going to give a one puzzle in that particular area that today whatever power is generating mostly by the what you call hydro energy and the uh, what you call thermal energies. That is right now with the whole waste energies are hydro energies. And if you see the real capacity, what you are producing wind energy and solar energy is hardly 2% or 3% of the total power generation. And most important thing is this hydro, especially these non-conventional source energy sources like wind energy and solar energy, they produce using some sort of a uh, condition units. That means they produce a DC and converting back into an AC voltage source sort of a thing. So there is a probability of a lot of ripples are coming into the system. So assume that in your grid, uh, there will be a situation that in your grid, if you are pumping something like a 10,000 or 100 gigawatt or a 10,000 megawatt of power into the grid, with a lot of ripples, what is the what you call a reliability of the transmission equipment? What is the reliability of the, your grid? This is going to be a major area one will be felt at one point of time. Because today it is not an issue because even power generation in the non conventional energy sources are restricted to 4 to 5 percent. So it cannot influence the grid voltage so much. But today, what is the purity of the voltage signal which is coming out of these power conditioning units is really a challenging issue for most of the power electronics people. It's not that what you call producing back to a some sort of a voltage signal. And when you are using that locally, there is not much issue. But when you are using that into a grid, you are trying to what you call change the entire voltage signal also to a certain extent. 